Okay, good evening councillors, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cabinet meeting of the 15th of December 2022. We'll go straight in with apologies for absence. I've received apologies from councillor Stephen Doyle, who is not very well. Uh, item two on the agenda, minutes of the previous meeting. You'll wish I sign those to a record. That's moved by councillor Pritchard, seconded by uh, councillor Farrell. All those in favour? That's unanimous, thank you very much. Uh, item three, declarations of interest. Does anything, anybody have anything pecuniary or non-pecuniary to declare? No, so there are none. Item four on the agenda is question time, uh, and I believe we have not had any questions submitted. Uh, in that case, do I have a proposal and seconder for the other meeting? That's proposed and seconded by the same people. All those in favour? It's carried. Thank you very much. I'll sign those both as a true record. Uh, item five, matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedurals. Uh, we do have one matter uh, which is commercially sensitive, so will be dealt with under the second section of the meeting, which is after the exclusion of the press and public. So we'll come back to that item shortly. Uh, so that brings us on to item six of the agenda, which is the UK Shared Prosperity Fund. Uh, just bear with me a second while I open the report. That's the wrong one. Okay, so um, you'll all be aware that the government has uh, changed a number of funding streams uh, in its... Uh, uh, in, in the wake of Brexit and its review of local enterprise partnerships uh, and other funding. Uh, and as, as a result of that, the UK Shared Prosperity Fund uh, has been created with a certain set of parameters and is now being sent through to a district level. Uh, so for the first time, we have things on our agenda that we've not been able to influence before, albeit we have desperately wanted to. Uh, so the report we have in front of us uh, is around the approval of the governance uh, around delivery of the UK Shared Prosperity Fund. There's the delegated authority uh, to the Head of Economic Development in consultation with the Assistant Director for Growth and Regeneration and the Portfolio Holder for Skills Planning Economy Waste uh, to establish relevant budgets, procedures and processes. Uh, and also there's a request that Cabinet approve the spend profile associated with the budgets of £2.3 million funded from UK Shared Prosperity Fund uh, over the next three years. And we also approve the approach to commissioning projects in year one. These are all detailed within the report. Uh, and I'm sure members are already aware uh, of the key, the four key themes of the UK's Shared Prosperity uh, Fund and the allocation is funding. And that's about building pride in place, uh, supporting high quality skills and training, supporting pay, employment and productivity growth uh, and increasing life chances. Uh, all of these we've embodied in our, in our vision uh, that we approved at full council back in back in February, uh, so it's good to see the government have, have, have followed our lead uh, and agreed with some of our priorities there. Uh, detail is within the report, but I move those four recommendations. Happy to take any questions. No. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Pritchard seconds. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. And that takes us back to the agenda, which is now on item seven, which is the council tax base. Uh, so, with that one, I will hand over to the portfolio holder for that report. Thank you, Councillor Oates. So, this is the calculation of the council tax base. It's a statutory requirement to inform the council's budget setting process and that of our council tax perceptors. It has been uh, sorry. It has been calculated at twenty three thousand three hundred and seventy six, which is an increase of four hundred and eight bandy equivalent since last year, due to lower levels of LCTR claims since twenty twenty one, and additional housing net of an increase in discounts and reduction in the number of empty properties. So the recommendation is that Tamworth Borough Council resolves its calculation of the council tax base for the year twenty twenty three twenty four to be 23,376. So I'd like to move the report. Thank you very much, Councillor. Does anybody have any questions or comments on that report? Um, I was just commenting to my colleague on my right. Uh, I wonder how much that figure's changed in the last 20 years that I've been sitting in here and we've 
approved it and one year voted against it. Uh, but less said the better. Um, do I have a seconder? Councillor Pritchard nods, so that's been seconded. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. And that brings us on to item seven of the agenda, which is write-offs, and that's back to Councillor Bailey. Thank you. So this is a statement of fact. This is the quarterly update report and details the debt written off for quarter two of the 2022-23 financial year. The write-offs detailed in the report are the exception and the very last resort where debt cannot be collected due to bankruptcy, etc. The recommendation is that members endorse the amount of debt written off for the period of the, from the 1st of April to the 30th of September 2022. I'm happy to move that. Okay, thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions or comments on the write-offs? Uh, so Councillor Pritchard has seconded. Uh, and what we need to remember is while we, while we write these off, if there's any opportunity ever arises to claw back any funding, we will pursue that because we, uh, like an elephant, we never forget. Uh, so that's been moved and seconded. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, brings us on to item nine of the agenda, which is the infrastructure funding uh, statement. Uh, and this is the uh, responsibility of the portfolio holder for skills, planning, economy and waste, who has sent his apologies this evening. So uh, I will introduce this report. Uh, this report is to seek cabinet approval for the publication of the infrastructure funding statement 21-22. And additionally, approval is sought from Cabinet for the allocation of £20,000 worth of neighbourhood SIL funds uh, to, pro uh, to projects by ward members. Uh, what we've done is allocated an element of the, of the SIL funding uh, for influence by, uh, by ward members. And in this case, this evening, we have uh, two particular projects which are being proposed uh, that we support to the tune of £10,000 each. Uh, and they are reliant on a successful project uh, plan being put together and on um, match funding uh, so any match funding and any caveats we need to be aware of uh, before we uh, before we actually get involved in those agreements uh, so all we're asking for this evening is approval from cabinet uh, uh, to in principle allocate ten thousand pound to to each of those projects so the recommendations are listed in the report one to three i'm happy to move those any questions or comments uh, Councillor Bailey seconds. All those in favour? Okay, that is unanimous as well. Thank you very much. And that brings me on to item 10, uh, which is a statement of common ground on planning issues. This is again uh, the responsibility of the portfolio holder for planning, economy, skills, uh, and waste. And I'm just getting through to that report, which I can't see in front of me at the moment. Just bear with me a second. There we go. I've just realised on mud.gov, they're all called agenda supplement, and, they're, and you, they're, they're not identified across the top, so. Okay, so um, this is a statement of common ground on planning issues, and this is seek uh, approval uh, that we, we present the, the statements of common ground with South Staffs District Council, and the councils of the Greater Birmingham and Black Country Housing Market Area. Uh, and we, uh, this, this report uh, requests the approval, uh, is granted for the signing of a statement of common ground with South, Staff uh, South Staffordshire District Council. Approval is granted for the signing of the statement of common ground uh, with the councils of the Greater Birmingham and Black Country Housing Market Area and authority is delegated to the Assistant Director, Growth and Regeneration, and the Portfolio Holder for Skills, Planning, Economy and Waste to make any final amendment uh, and sign those documents off. Um, this, uh, these documents fall out of the uh, National Planning uh, Framework, uh, which places uh, a duty on us to cooperate with neighbouring authorities. Uh, happy to move that report. Any questions or comments? Okay, do I have a seconder? Councillor Farrell seconded those. Uh, all those in favour? Okay, that again is unanimous. Thank you very much. And so that brings us on to item 11, which is the exclusion of press and public. Uh, so I move that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities, executive arrangements, meeting and access to information, England regulations 2012, 
section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972 that the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of an exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12A of the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information. I so move to have a seconder. Uh, I think Councillor Pritchard beat everyone to it, so all those in favour? That is carried. So if the press public could be excluded and the webcam could be closed down, I would be grateful. Thank you.